We're going to talk about Ophelia today because she is really just as important a character in this play as Hamlet himself. She has taken on this incredible meaning, even though she seems like a really minor character in the play. This scene that we read for today where she has suffered a breakdown over the death of her father and the disappearance of Hamlet, has been used different ways and interpreted different ways over the centuries since the play was written. In the 18th and 19th century, psychologists looked to Ophelia to demonstrate what would happen to women who were unchaste or who remained unmarried. They would, basically the point was that a woman would obviously become unhinged without a man in her life to take care of her. The psychologists look to her use of songs and flowers to communicate as signs of hysteria, which is basically female insanity. The roots of the word hysteria um, and hysterectomy come from the same word that is linked to um, female reproductive system. And so hysteria might mean insanity now, but it was originally specifically female insanity. And so that kind of weakness and that kind of regression almost to childishness and an inability to make sense except for communicating through symbolism and song were uh, are kind of the classic representations of female insanity. And so that is kind of the original or the early interpretation of Ophelia's decline. Later in the 19th and 20th century, the women's rights movements co-opted Ophelia and kind of resurrected her as an example of what happens to a woman who is too connected to a man. So whereas it used to be a sign of what would happen if there was not a man in a woman's life, the women's movement turned it around and said, when women are only defined by their relationship with men, they lose their mind. That's why women need independence rather than that's why women need a man. That's why women need independence and an independent purpose so that they are not so dependent upon a man. So this is a collection of paintings that of Ophelia because she, just like psychologists have been fascinated by Ophelia, artists have also been fascinated by Ophelia and they are drawn in particular to the scenes of her death and the connection she has to flowers, but also just the, um, the skill that it takes to depict the madness in her eyes and in her face. And so we're going to kind of look at some different artistic interpretations in order to see how artists have, um, how, how the representation of Ophelia has changed or shifted over the centuries. One of the earliest ones here is a, an ink drawing from 1775 that was actually accompanied and edition of Shakespeare. And you can see here how she's covered with flowers. But if you look closely, she doesn't really look mad so much as she just looks um, simple-minded, perhaps, or absent-minded. Um, so she's still very innocently depicted here as childlike, but not really in despair at this point. Same year, different artist. This artist shows a little bit more of the vacancy in her eyes here and her, you know, she is distracted to the point of abstraction really, but she's carrying here some of the herbs that she mentions in that scene. So you've got kind of that vacant look in her eye here. Her open mouth shows distress. This is a really interesting one because it's a photograph instead of a painting. This is actually a photographic study that was done in 
the 19th century, so around the 1850s, where women in an actual insane asylum were depicted as Ophelia. And so they dressed them in these flowers and headdresses to call to Ophelia. But this is a photograph of actual distress. This is an actual woman who has been institutionalized for insanity. And so it's kind of interesting to see the look on her face compared to the faces of the artistic renditions. Um, also, I like the point here. It says in the 19th century, one way for a woman to express her psychological anguish was to imitate Ophelia. And so it's almost like Ophelia gave women a way to express themselves. So they didn't know how to convey their distress. They would look to Ophelia and kind of her cry, her mark, King of Scotland, mark. She's saying, pay attention, like, look, there's, there's something going on here. And so when, when young girls or young women were in that distressing situation, they would look to Ophelia as an example of how, how to convey their anguish. All right, back to drawings here. This woman still has those vacant eyes. We're in the late 1800s here. She looks kind of like a wild child or something. Like her, um, she's still got that same slack jawed expression as one of the earlier ones, but she looks a little bit more like she doesn't even know where she is, maybe, or where she's going at this point. Uh oh, went too fast. This one's kind of creepy. Like she has this kind of sinister look to her. She's still dressed in the innocent white. She looks very young in this rendition, I think. Um, she and her flower, these are more flowers than herbs, which it makes her again more innocent and a little less crazy perhaps. Um, and she's, as it says here, she's not sweetly sad. She's intensely staring like she looks capable of violence almost but you can see in the background here is a suggestion of the river this one also has that intensity to it where it is a madness capable of violence and really haunting eyes here uh, flowers again though all in her hair hinting at her final resting place. Now we begin to see more natural images instead of just focuses on her face. Many of these later ones feature her in a natural environment. Um, and in this one, she is not in the water. She's actually laying on the grass, but she still looks, like it says, incapable of her own distress. She is just she doesn't know where to go or what to do here's one where she's finally sitting by the pond it looks like her feet are even already wet her dress starting to absorb some of the water it's kind of gone back to that sweetly sad look where she looks almost happy or wistful maybe dreamy to be here by the water but what strikes me about this picture is how it's like her hair is in the water or becoming part of the log, like the paint kind of blurs in those areas. So she's very much a part of nature here and becoming, it's like the, it's like the creek is sucking her into it. Here's another one with that wild eyed expression and she's collected her herbs and flowers in her dress here. This one stands out as different from many of the others because her dress is so brightly purple and embellished with this gold. It's a far cry from the simplicity that she's usually depicted in, if you look at all the other dresses. This is actually, you may have noticed, John Waterhouse is the artist of several of these. He, he painted this one, he, he drew, painted this one. So he kind of did a whole study on Ophelia and and this one stands out 
Another interesting thing to note is that there are children in the background watching her, which there aren't other people in most of these. So that was also an interesting choice. Um, and so this makes it seem more like she could fall in that water because, it, you know, she's about to climb out and reach out too far and fall into that water. I like the, this is an indoor image of her. She appears to be praying, perhaps. She's looking up into that light. It has light shining down on her. She's in that innocent virginal white again, has an armful of flowers. And she it looks distressed in a way that is not madness, like in terms of being um, violent, like some of these were, but she is, she looks like she's seeking help still. Like this might be an earlier image. This one, she looks very, very young. And I like this one because you can't see a lot of detail in it, but she's so very pale and she stands starkly out from the darkness here. The Her headdress and the things she's holding seem very sharp, though, very dangerous. The Where she is looks dark and dangerous compared to how pale she looks. Um, also here, she's kind of precariously balanced on this limb over the water, and you can see how she could possibly just fall right in. And then the thing about Ophelia is that after she falls in, here's another one, precariously balanced on the limb. And we're kind of getting toward these where the volume of her dress is a significant factor. Um, this dress looks very heavy. Look at the amount, the volume of material on that dress, even though it's still the virginal white. She definitely looks vacant here. Um, kind of in one of her happy reveries, perhaps. The And so from this point forward, these dresses, they're so heavy and thick that you can see how the dress is part of what weighs her down. This one is great with you can, she looks kind of angelic with the dress billowing out behind her. And but the water is filling up her dress and, and sucking her down. Like it, it gets so heavy that that's part of why she can't get back up. She's got the, her arms out in this image of surrender. Like she's fallen in and she can't or won't get up. It's kind of a choice not to get up. And this is perhaps the most famous painting of Ophelia. You'll see this on display in a lot of English classrooms. The My sister had it in her room as a teenager for some reason. The it You can see that the water is not that deep. At this point, she hasn't even completely gone underwater. But you can see that it is shallow enough that she could get up if she chose to but she is incapable of her own distress and cannot rise or does not rise, will not rise, perhaps. She, she looks almost like a bride in her white dress being carried away, but the nature that is around her is full of life. It's bright green. And so that's really one of the things artists like about this scene is the contrast of the girl choosing death while surrounded by such bright, lush life. And that's probably what draws them to this scene. And so really just the point of looking at all of these was that Ophelia is just as frequently depicted character as Hamlet himself, perhaps even more by artists. And looking at her madness, her true sincere madness and despair compared to Hamlet's antics and silliness 
and the wild behavior that overtakes him when in his moments of true madness makes Hamlet a very interesting psychological play.